and just as a Warrior fan not watching with any stress and sitting back as an observer of the game of basketball. And last night was the reason why I fell in love with the NBA. That's why I fell in love with the NBA. That was real playoff basketball. That's the basketball we've all been waiting for. And so LeBron in the fourth quarter, look, he was flirting with a triple-double, but he wasn't scoring. His fourth quarter was incredible. The two threes, <laughs> the, dunk, the and one, the dunk, the dunk the over steal. Jamal Murray on yeah. the fast break, yeah. dunk, steal, boom, he barely got up, but he got it up there. He blocked blocked Murray multiple times, blocked his dunk and tipped early. In the first quarter, he had a, ball, had a pass like he was less unsailed, throws it 94 feet to Anthony Davis for a dunk. I mean, but his fourth quarter, I was like, damn, this guy's damn near 40. And he's care. I thought the Lakers were going to win the game. We all did. And then Jamal Murray hits two. No, no, no. Yes, shots. But this is unbelievable. Murray, for some reason, maybe it's off. Maybe I'm off with this comp. But he reminds me so much of Dwayne Wade with the way he moves as a combo guard, the handle. Now, he's got more range than Dwayne Wade from the three-point line. No doubt about he it. He doesn't jump anywhere near. And he, doesn't, he doesn't jump like Dwayne Wade. But the handles and the body movements, and I don't know, man. The guy's a stud. I can't believe he's never made an all-star game. What a shot to give the Nuggets and as they show championship grit. And Jokic taking Anthony Davis to the block. Took him to the weight room. They were allowing so much physicality on his backups. It reminded me of backyard basketball. Did it, it not? It was, it was, look, it was physical. Well, and then he did the spin move on AD. Let's just seal him off. AD leaves his feet and boom, he gets the and one like it over and over again. The other thing is like, is anyone going to stop ball on the Jamal Murray pick and rolls at the top yeah. of the key? How many times did he knife into the lane? How many? Over and over. And, and, and no one's going to guard him? Well, that two bad game is just impossible. To stop right now. Well, it's also because you have it's, Michael it's, Porter Jr. Yeah. stretching the floor, stretching the and floor. so you have to honor the three point shooters. And, and Gordon, and Gordon is slashing to the basket, but not only that. Did you think Jokic, he was out of bounds? Jokic, who? A Gordon on that play, on that tip play. That's close. It was close. It was close. But you got to let him play. I couldn't. You let him play. I, I couldn't. Tell. I, I couldn't really tell. I didn't even think about it to be honest with you. Um, but see, but, but that two bad game between. Could you put on a better uniform? Game, no, no, forget that the uniform. jersey was terrible. Oh, I love those uniforms. The five love, two eight. Yeah, I love zero. those. The Mile High City. Those are it the ugliest you. uniforms in oh, the league. Nah, I and that's no, saying something. No, 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 no. Those are some nice uniforms. But the two bad game between Jokic and Murray. No, 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 no. That's gone too far. It's the most unstoppable two bad game. I've seen probably since. I mean, you had KD and Steph. You've had LeBron and AD. You've had LeBron and Kyrie. You've had you've had some great two man games. But I always go back to Stockton and Malone uh -huh. as the pinnacle for the two man game in my lifetime. Uh -huh. Stockton Malone, pick and roll all day. You knew what was coming. You couldn't stop it. Malone either pulls up for the sixteen foot mini or he goes to the lane and he elbows you in the face while getting that one at the rim. What well, Jokic and Murray does? I don't know how you stop it. Do you blitz it? Do you trap it? I don't know what you do. Because it's damn near unstoppable. Jokic gets to switch, and he just bodies you down on the block. He just plays bully balls like we're in the hood. And he's like, yo, watch out. Weight room, homie. And just punks yeah. AD in the fourth quarter. I, I love Stockton and Malone. Don't get me wrong. John Stockton shorts like my dad in the 1980s. I think I'm taking Dwayne Wade and LeBron James or Kobe and Gasol, Kobe and Kobe Shaq, Shaq over them. But I hear what you're saying in terms of the uh, synergy. Dude, I, th th their two-man game has been unstoppable for three straight years. Uh, no doubt. For two straight years. But it's also say. because of the stretch floor. So, like, when I look at Stockton and Malone, you had Hornacek out on the edge, right? Stretching. And Hornacek was a knockdown shooter. I mean, the guy was lethal. Um, I think he would have been even better in this particular era because we have a premium on shooting a three-point shot. But when you have KCP, when you have Gordon, when you have Michael Porter, I mean, Michael Michael Porter Jr. on how many teams is your first or second option? How many? Uh, I mean, he may be a second option on some bad teams. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I hear but, you. But when you're the third, right. fourth option. Oh, well, he's a four, third, fourth option. That's what he's I'm saying. Shooter, like, and he's like, all he's doing is a that's shooter. That's a plethora of depth. No doubt. You know? That's and, what and you I, need to get Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, I mean, dude, they've got a, they've got an unstoppable team, and every one of those guys is in their prime. And when I look at Gordon, Gordon just loves doing all the dirty work. You know, I mean, you just chalk no. him up for 12 and a grimy 10 well, every he, night. He he was a great addition for them. Trent getting him from Orlando. Great call. It's perfect for him. Uh, that Denver crowd. He accepted the role, too. Crowd, oh, you, no doubt he accepted the role. You know what? I started to see him grow late in that series against the Golden State Warriors a couple seasons ago yeah, in the first call. round. First first three games, he's trying to do too much. He's getting punked. He's getting bullied. And as you know, he figured something out. Even though they lost that series at five, I saw him start to play tougher, start to use his strength, start to get to the rack. And actually, Darrell and I, we saw him after the game. He was walking right through Thrive City. And he was just like, look, man, I'm, I'm just going to be at home. I'm going to be in the weight room. I'm working on my game. 
I'm working on my game. You know what? Aaron Gordon from San Jose, Earth Bishop Mitty, he's our own guy. He's our Bay Area, uh, our Bay Area son. He has grown up, and now he's an NBA champion, and he's playing a role. What a save there to get it to Michael Porter Jr. on the three-point shot. What a wild sequence. What a wild fourth quarter that was in Denver. And then you had a wild fourth quarter in Madison Square I, Garden. I thought that was even more wild than the, it than was. the Laker game. Because it was wild. to me, I'm looking at that one, and I'm just saying, that inbound play is going to live in infamy. Well, here's Mike Breen on yeah. MSG Network with the call on Dante DiVincenzo's game-winning three-pointer. Eight on the 24, DiVincenzo, corner to Brunson. Sidestep, three-pointer, shot. It's good! Took the bounce and went in! Two-point game. Ball knocked loose, and Maxi gets knocked down. Hart takes it away. Out top to DiVincenzo, his shot. Won't go, Hartenstein the rebound. Hartenstein gets it out to Ananobi. DiVincenzo a three. Bang! Bang! Knicks take a one-point lead! I mean, what a wild sequence. We're going to break it all down here from the beginning where Maxie gets the ball stolen. There's no timeouts called. I mean, Philly's losing it. Maybe he gets fouled. But it was just all kind of buffoonery going on in that last sequence. It was the reverse Reggie Miller. It was just, um, yeah, they did reverse it. Eight, eight points in 27 seconds. Maybe there was the curse of Reggie Miller that they finally lifted. But what a comeback for the New York Knicks. As Embiid is running up and down the court with one leg. How about Max? Gotta get out. Maxie's a star. I mean, Maxie's a star. He hit some I mean, shots in that fourth quarter uh, down the stretch. Uh, the, some of them step back threes were ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie. That's who Jordan Poole was a couple years ago. They're a little, they're a little different. A little different. I, but I, this but I, impact. I, I get the impact. The, the impact. youthful exuberance and the the fearlessness to take those shots. Exactly. I, I think that people don't understand when you get into these into these series. Sometimes guys like. Throughout the regular season, they'll take that shot. And then they pass it up in key moments. Maxi was fearless yesterday. Yep. And fearless. then Kyle Lowry, I just be he's one of my all time. I can't stand watching players. Like oh, if I had a top five of guys who drive me insane when I watch them, it's Kyle Lowry. He crashes into everyone. He tackled Jalen Brunson to start that entire wild sequence. Just tackled him. And they didn't call anything. And then he's inbounding the ball, okay? He's inbounding the ball by Hartenstein, by the way. No one talks about him. I don't, I'm not here to say he's some like unbelievable difference maker. He's perfect on that Knicks team. The guy gets rebounds. He could knock it down a shot when needed. I just, he's a rugged player. I like Hartenstein. But they're inbounding the ball. And they run the weakest little screen for Maxi, and he's getting double teamed. Kyle Lowry's running baseline because it's a made basket. And then you have Batum, a career 83% free throw shooter, and Tobias Harris, a career 85% free throw shooter, making $40 million a year, not wanting to come to the ball on the inbound at all, as Maxi is getting double teamed. Someone have the wherewithal well, thought, to call timeout. Well, thought, Somebody thought, run to the ball. Well, Make thought, yourself open. V cut. Do something. Well, I thought, I thought um, Kyle Lowry, being a veteran that he is, and being a guy that has won a championship, and it's been a lot of playoff wars, how do you not just call timeout for Kyle Lowry? Just call the timeout. Don't rely on Nick Nurse to do it. And officials are not looking at him. They're looking at the court. They're looking at the players on the court. They're looking at the ball. Kyle Lowry has to call a timeout. You cannot make that pass with the player like Tyrese Maxey going towards the sideline I mean, where you're going to get trapped in the corner serious. and you make it a held ball or whatnot. You cannot do that. But Boston, you cannot when you're not guarding Kyle the Lowry. inbounder, when you're not guarding the inbounder, that means one guy's going to get yep. double teamed in that situation. That's why Kyle Lowry has to call the timeout no, I hear right you, there. but the other two players on the court, not named Embiid, they literally have their backs turned at points and not even yeah. trying to get themselves open. No doubt. I'm with you. Yes, timeout Call, originally. That's, but that's, guys but, have to flash to the yeah, ball. They do got to flash to the ball, but at the same time, Lowry's running to the right. Looking at Maxi the whole damn yeah, time. He, yeah, you're he right. wasn't looking around. His no, awareness no wasn't options. around. There's no other. But Lowry, call the timeout. No, I'm with call you. Call the timeout. He inbounds it, and all hell breaks loose. And now anything's possible but to the happen. The second that La that Maxi's getting double teamed, one of the other two players again. If they were like thirty percent free throw shooters, sixty percent, I'll listen to that. But Tooms an eighty three percent free throw shooter, and Tobias Harris is a max player what? who's an eighty five percent career free throw shooter. Like someone's got to move. They literally don't move. Yeah, it's, I, you're I put, unguarded. Yeah, no, I hear you on that one. I put it on Lowry. I put it on Lowry. He's a veteran in that situation. It's true. They brought him there for that situation. They brought him there to be a veteran presence as a point guard. You've got to call the timeout. 
You cannot inbound that basketball and throw it into play. And then you blow it there. And you waste your championship. We lost the championship. Listen, well, well, that that was because of Andrews. I know, but he played out of his mind. As Fitz says, as Fitz says, (laughs) throw an asterisk next to it. No, they deserve credit. They played great. I'm alive with Fitz. They know what time it was. They know what time it was. They know what time it was. We were at all those games. You can give them respect. Forget them. Don't you hate when people say, like, Kyrie got hurt and Kevin Love got hurt? They do it anyway. They give the Warriors all three championships. I I give Toronto a lot of credit for that championship. It's good for them. And Kyle Lowry, one of the worst playoff performers of all time until that particular playoff run. He was okay. No. He was more vividly. And Kawhi, it's Kawhi. Even I don't Powell know. killed us. Yeah, I know. Powell killed him a couple, or not Powell, uh, Mark Gasol. Um, look, man, the Knicks, the Sixers blow it. And I just saw a stat up there where the Sixers are 0 and 14 when they're down 0 2 in the best of seven series. Oof. And you saw Joel Embiid, who's lipping around there. He had a generational performance. Huh. Embiid and Maxi, I mean, you talk about putting the team on their back. Embiid couldn't run. He's getting he massaged on run. the sideline. Dude. It- as, as the right. game is going on. He's not going to last in these playoffs. No. He's just not. So you feel so bad for him because he's given everything you got. He's, and I was listening to Marcus Cousins yesterday. I saw a clip with him and Rachel Nichols. But DeMarcus was basically saying, like, look, he's got to lose some weight. You cannot continue to play huh. at 280, 300 pounds. He noted that Tim Duncan slimmed down. So when I look back, I kind of look back at Tim Duncan, I was like, wow, he did kind of slim down as he got older mm. to keep that weight off, yeah. to keep those injuries off. Because the more weight he keeps on and you're playing up and down, like next year for NBA, my plan would be you're not playing any back-to-backs. The back end of a back-to-back on the front end, you're missing one of the two yeah, games. But it does feel like uh, it, he has these freak crashes in yeah. in, in the lane because he's so big. I, I don't know. Well, I, he, got I hear you with MB, he got hurt with Kaminga looking I, for a loose ball. Fell on his leg. It's random. <laughs> I mean, isn't it? So I, I mean, they, I hear you I, on the back to back. So, but yeah, I, I, I just got to, I got to find a way to preserve him. I, I it's got to find a way to get to him me, to the it's playoffs. Like, healthy. I just play him fifty games. Like I'm trying to do like fifty games. Right. And it's all about the playoffs. All about the playoffs. But it's difficult because if you find yourself in the play in, now you're playing a bunch of games impacted in a short amount of time. I mean, they were in the play in. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> You, you got to have a decent enough regular season. It's of it's course. just such a catch twenty two. And some. this goes back to the sixty five game minimum, which you brought up yesterday, B. Where it's like a guy like Embiid clearly has leg issues. So you're telling him he has to play the sixty five games. I, I, well, that's that's it's a dumb easier rule. said than yeah, done. It's a dumb rule. I, I, it never fails. Why are the Warriors a side boogie? I'm <laughs> on YouTube. Remember we had Joe Lake of it. We had Joe Lake of it. And Horse the first two calls, Horse in Texas. Asking about who? DeMarcus Cousins? And then we had the next caller call upon Dwight Howard. It's like, sorry, Joe. We thought we had better calls. Um, Joe Lebede. Here's Joe Lebede after the game. Oh, he's such a great player. I mean, everybody on the floor was trying to call a timeout, myself included, Nico, coach on the sideline. But that didn't give it to us. But, you know, forget about the timeout. There's a bunch of fouls. You know, that's, yeah, like I said, that's fucking unacceptable. How do you try to bounce back as you guys head home and, and try to try to sing around. We should be so I know, so, you know, we're good. We're going to win this series. Uh, you know, we we going to win this. I ain't mad at that. We good. We going to win this series, homie. You better win game three in Philadelphia. You better win game three. I mean, the, crack, Jan- crack, crack. the Jalen Brunson three hitting front iron and going in. That was just. Kind of tells you everything. You, I mean, like, it's just one of those. One of those situations. But here's the thing. Like, and this is where I would say to, to Joel. Joel, you are one of the most physical players in the league. And rightfully, you're humongous. You play with one of the biggest hacks on the planet. His name is Kyle Lowry. I don't want to hear about anything when it comes to flopping. Well, and t- he tackled Jalen Brunson. Well, I mean, he flopped for 13 <laughs> oh seconds left when Divincenzo hit the three. Oh if you watch God. him flopping out of bounds, it's like, what are you doing? He, he what drives, are you doing? I, I'm sorry, I get triggered by him. No, nah, yeah, I mean, he's he's whatever. He's almost done. He's almost done. But it was a great night of NBA oh, basketball. Incredible. The Giants get to win. And you know what? Keaton win. Who was I thought he pitched well all season. He's been solid. He's kept the Giants in the game. His record didn't reflect it. Kept the Giants in the game again yesterday, limiting the Mets to one run. I mean, hey, let's see if the Giants can win on Web Day today. Web Day. Let's see if they can win today on Web Day. They start a winning streak here and get rolling. But overall, a solid win. I know you got your issues with right field. That's gonna sort itself out. I'm not gonna freak out about it, but Nick Ahmed at shortstop. He's making it hard for Luciano to come up. And you know what? I'm here for that. Have you heard anyone bring up the name Brandon Crawford? No, nobody was. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, he's replacing a legend. Like, like let's call it what it is. Like Now, maybe not of the legendary status of a Clay Thompson right. or a Steph Curry or something like that. But, like, 
Brady Crawford is the greatest defensive shortstop in Giants history. Now, I don't I don't know how people weigh these things, you know, because offense is always more sexy than yeah, defense. That's, that's what I'm saying. But and in the last couple of years he fizzled out. But let's let's call it what it was. I mean, he had a magical twenty twenty one season. Giants fans were ready to move on from Crawford. Right? No, I'm with I, you. I mean, but Nick like, Ahmed was kinda like uh yeah, you know well, I feel like Giants fans would be ready for the pitchforks. He's been way better than advertised. No, he's been he's been really good. It's early, really but good. like he's been really good. A big knock there to, to kind of bust this game open to get the Giants on the board, 2 nothing there. I mean, but a 0 nice little seagull center field, 0-2. I thought Jung Hu Lee had a good two-strike at bat. Did you like that? Uh, later in the, late, that later nice. in the game to, to get it runners on. You had multiple runners on. And next thing you know, you go up 4 nothing. Conforto gets a jack yesterday. It's an all-around clean win for the Giants. Now, I know Camilo Duvall gives, gives up a run in the ninth inning, but that's what happens when you put a closer in a non yeah, situation. Exactly. It always happens like that. But the Giants did win. Uh, five to one over the New York Mets. Now this tonight's a great matchup: Severino versus Logan Webb. Should be a duel down at Oracle Park. Severino, it's just the injuries have just done it in his career. I mean, the guy has unbelievable talent, yep. and this is why he's not a Yankee. Uh, I, I also like. I think it's pretty obvious to me. I don't know if they're going to trade him. I don't know if they'd ever trade him, or he'd entertain a trade to San Francisco. But dear God, how good! And look, Lamont Wade's been awesome. Period. I, I'm not. This isn't a Lamont Wade question. How good would Pete Alonso look in a Giants uniform? He hit a ball off his shoe tops yesterday, down the line effortlessly. I mean, that right-handed power plays. I don't care what ballpark it's in. Get me the polar bear. I want him playing in Crow de Craw, a a.k.a. Oracle Park. Nah, he, Make sure you don't miss that break, bro. Pete Alonso needs to be a Giant. If that guy's available, they need to make a deal for him.